Anakin Skywalker rushed through the open doors of the main hangar after the Jedi and Padme, with R2-D2 and the rest of the Naboo Freedom Fighters on their heels. Battle droids turned to confront them, but lightsabers and blasters cut apart the foremost before the others even knew what was happening. The droids rallied in response, summoning help from without, but Panaka and his men had those in the plaza already occupied, and for a moment the Jedi and the Naboo were in control. Mindful of Qui-Gon's admonition, Anakin ducked beneath the fuselage of the closest starfighter, laser bolts searing the air around him in brilliant bursts of fire. Get to your ships! Padme shouted at her pilots, leading the contingent of Naboo soldiers under her command in pursuit of the retreating battle droids. Ducking and crouching, she fired her blaster with quick, precise moves, bringing down droid after droid, her charges finding their targets with unerring accuracy. The Jedi fought just ahead of her, blocking droid laser fire with their lightsabers, striking down those unfortunate enough to cross their path. But it was Padme on whom Anakin's eyes were riveted, for not only had he never seen the sight of her, he hadn't even known it existed. She moved with the skill and training of a seasoned fighter, no longer seeming in any way a young girl, becoming instead a deadly combatant. He thought suddenly of his dream of Padme leading an army in another time and place, and suddenly the dream didn't seem so possible. Pilots from the attacking force and R2 units freed from storage in the hangar lockers moved quickly to board the Naboo fighters, scattering swiftly through the hail of blaster fire. Clambering aboard their starships, pilots in the cockpits, R2 units in their sockets, they switched on their control panels and ignited their engines. A roar of power filled the massive hangar, drowning out the sound of laser fire, building to an ear-shattering crescendo. One by one, the fighters began to levitate and shift into position for takeoff. A Naboo pilot rushed past Anakin and climbed into the fighter he was crouched behind. Better get out of here, kid! She called down from the cockpit. Find yourself a new hiding place! You're about to lose this one! Anakin darted away in a low crouch, droid blaster fire crisscrossing the air above him, centering on the departing ships. The fighter he had abandoned began to lift off, wheeling toward the open hangar doors. Other ships were already moving. Other ships were already speeding away into the blue, engines booming. As the Jedi and the Naboo fighters continued to push the droid hangar watch steadily back, Anakin searched hastily for a new hiding place. Then he heard R2-D2 whistle at him from another fighter close at hand. The little droid already ensconced in his socket, domed head rotating, control lights flashing. The boy raced across the hangar floor littered with the shattered bodies of battle droids, laser fire whizzing all about him, and jumped into the cockpit with a gasp of relief. Peering out from the safety of his bolt hole, he watched the last pair of Naboo fighters rocket out of the hangar. The first got free, but the second was hit by tank fire and knocked sideways so that it pinwheeled into the ground and exploded in a ball of flame. Anakin winced and crouched lower. Now Panaka, Sabe, and the Naboo soldiers, who had been engaged in combat outside the hangar, burst through the doors as well, firing as they came. Caught in a crossfire, the remaining battle droids were quickly overwhelmed and destroyed. There was a hurried conference between the Jedi, Padme, and Panaka, and then the entire Naboo fighting force began to move toward an exit in the hangar that took them directly past Anakin's hiding place. Hey, where are you going? The boy asked popping his head out of the cockpit as they passed. Annie, stay where you are, Qui-Gon ordered, motioning him back down. His long hair was wild and his face was intense. Stay right where you are. The boy ignored him, standing up instead. No, I want to go with you and Padme. Stay in that cockpit, Qui-Gon snapped in a tone of voice that brooked no argument. Anakin froze, undecided, as the contingent hurried past him toward the exit door, weapons at the ready. He did not want to be left behind. He had no intention of letting Qui-Gon and Padme go on without him, especially since he could do nothing to help them if he was stuck here in this empty hangar. He was still wrestling with the matter when the entire group slowed in front of the exit door. 
A dark cloaked figure stepped through the opening to confront them. Anakin's breath caught in his throat. It was the Sith Lord who had attacked them on the Tatooine Desert. A dangerous adversary, Qui-Gon had advised the boy later. An enemy of the Jedi Knights. He stepped out of the shadows like a large sand panther, his red and black tattooed face a terrifying mask, his yellow eyes bright with anticipation and rage. Blocking the way out, he stood waiting for the Jedi and their charges, a long-handled lightsaber held before him. Captain Panaka and his fighters backed away at once. Then, on command from Qui-Gon, Padme and her handmaidens gave ground as well, though less quickly and with more obvious reluctance. Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan stood alone in the Sith Lord's path. Together, they removed their capes and ignited their lightsabers. Their horned antagonist stripped away his cloak as well, then lifted the long-handled lightsaber he bore as if offering it for inspection. Gleaming blade fire jutted from both ends of the handle, revealing a deadly dual-blade weapon. A smile crossed the bearer's feral face as he swung the weapon before him in an idle, casual gesture, beckoning the Jedi ahead. Spreading out to either side, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan slowly advanced to meet him. On the plain south of Theed, the battle between the Trade Federation and the Gungan armies was fully joined. Gungans and battle droids were locked in close combat, a tangle of amphibious bodies and metal shells. The shield generators still held the Trade Federation tanks at bay. Only the droids had broken through, but there were many more of them than there were of the Gungans, and General Seal had committed all his reserves to the struggle. Jar Jar Binks fought at the center of the maelstrom, wielding a broken energy spear as a club, wheeling and stumbling this way and that, careening wildly. Caught up in the wiring of a battle droid he had decapitated, he could not manage to free himself from the debris, and so was dragging the headless torso after him. The droid, still operating on autopilot despite the loss of its head, was firing its blaster continuously as Jar Jar whipped it this way and that, finding droid targets more often than Gungans, cutting a swath through their faltering ranks. Tissin Bombat! Tissin Bombat! The Gungan shouted out the refrain over and over as he swung his shattered spear and fought to get free of his headless companion. When at last he broke away and was able to smash the remains of the droid into the ground, he was left standing in a wide open space that everyone on both sides was trying desperately to avoid. For a terrifying moment, Jar Jar literally did not know which way to turn. Then a cry went up from the Gungan's closest. Jar Jar Binks! Jar Jar Binks! Who, me sir? The befuddled Gungan gasped. Inspired troops rallied around him and pressed ahead once more, sweeping him along in a wild and unexpected counterattack. But the Trade Federation, unlike the Gungans, had other weapons left to call upon. OOM-9, responding to orders from the orbiting battleship command station, unleashed a battalion of destroyer droids from the transports. Down long rampways they wheeled, across the grasslands, over the bodies of shattered battle droids, and through the Gungan energy shield. Transforming into battle mode, they began to advance through the carnage, twin blasters firing in a steady cadence. Gungans and Kadu went down in broken heaps, but other Gungans moved quickly to fill the gaps in their lines, slowing the destroyer droids, fighting to hold their ground. Back and forth the battle raged, the outcome undecided. Anakin Skywalker had made a promise to himself that he would protect Qui-Gon Jinn and Padme Nibiri from harm, that he would see to it somehow that nothing bad happened to them. He knew when he made the promise how hard it was going to be to keep it. Somewhere in the back of his mind, where he would admit such things privately, he knew how foolish it was even to make such a commitment. But he was young and brave at heart, and he had lived his life pretty much on his own terms, because to live it any other way would have broken him long ago. It hadn't been easy doing so, especially as a slave. 
He had survived mostly because he had been able to find small victories in difficult situations, and because he had always believed that one day he would find a way to overcome the circumstances of his birth. His belief in himself had been rewarded. His life had been changed forever by his victory just days earlier in the Boon to Eve pod race on Tatooine. It was not so strange then that he should decide he could somehow affect the lives of a Jedi Knight and a Naboo Queen as well, even if he did not know precisely how. He was not afraid to accept such responsibility. He was not daunted by the challenge his decision presented. But now his resolve was put to the test. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan closed with the Sith Lord in a clash of lightsabers that produced the shriek of diamond-edged saw blades cutting through metal. Wheeling across the center of the hangar, the combatants lunged and parried. Attack and counterattack carried out in a fierce, no-holds-barred, no-quarter-given struggle. The Sith Lord was supple and quick, and he worked his way between the Jedi with confidence and ease whipping his two-ended lightsaber back and forth between them, more than holding his own against their efforts to bring him down. He was skilled, Anakin saw, more skilled, perhaps, than the men he faced, and he was confident in a way that was disturbing. He would not be overcome easily. But Padme and the Naboo faced a more dangerous situation still. At the far end of the hangar, from off the plaza, a cluster of three destroyer droids wheeled through the doorway and began to unfold, assuming battle stance. R2-D2 saw them first and beeped a warning to the boy. Anakin tore his gaze away from the Jedi and the Sith Lord. The destroyer droids had transformed and were already moving forward, laser guns firing into the Naboo. Several soldiers went down and Sabe was stung by a glancing blow that knocked her backward into the arms of Panaka. Padme and her companions resisted determinedly, but already they were falling back to find cover. We've got to help, R2, the boy declared, standing up in the cockpit with the intention of doing something, anything, casting about futilely for a weapon. But R2-D2 was way ahead of him. The little droid had plugged himself into the Starfighter's computer system, lights blinking across the control panel lights blinking across his control panel as he triggered the big engines. Everything roared to life at once, startling Anakin, who fell back in the pilot seat in surprise. Slowly, the ship began to levitate, wheeling out of its mooring space. Great work, R2! Anakin shouted excitedly, reaching at once for the steering bars. Now let's see. He wheeled the fighter about so that it was facing toward the combatants. His eyes scanned the control panel desperately, searching for the weapon systems. He knew something of fighters from salvaging wrecks, but nothing of Naboo fighters in particular, or of weapon systems in general. Most of what he knew was about guidance systems and engines, and most of that about pods, speeders, and aging transports. Which one, which one, he muttered, his fingers passing over buttons and levers and switches, undecided. He lifted his eyes momentarily. One of the Naboo soldiers went down in a crumpled heap, his helmet and blaster flying away in a clatter of metal. Laser charges burned the metal girders and walls about the defenders as the destroyer droids continued their relentless attack on Padme's dwindling force. In desperation, Anakin threw a bank of switches set into a red panel. The fighter began to shake violently, a reaction to a shift in the stabilizers. Uh-oh, wrong ones, the boy breathed, throwing the switches back into place. His gaze roamed to a bank of four dark buttons recessed deep into finger holes and circled in green. Maybe these. He pressed down on the buttons. Instantly, the nose lasers fired, their charges ripping into the battle droids. Three went down, charred and smoking scrap. Yeah! Joy blasters! He shouted gleefully, and behind him, R2-D2 beeped his approval. The remaining destroyer droids wheeled toward him, spreading out across the hangar floor to present a more difficult target. Behind them, Padme, her handmaidens, Panaka, and the remainder of the Naboo soldiers were racing for the door that led back toward the palace. 
Anakin watched over the rim of the cockpit as they disappeared safely out the door. Good luck, he whispered. The destroyer droids were advancing on him now, their blasters firing, charges exploding all around him, shaking the fighter's slim frame. Anakin had a momentary glance of the Sith Lord driving the Jedi across the hangar and through an opening into a room beyond, pressing them backward relentlessly, pursuing them with a fury that was terrifying. Then they disappeared from view as well, and the boy was alone with his attackers. A laser blast struck the nose of his craft and knocked the ship sideways. The boy tightened his grip on the steering. He fired his own lasers in retaliation, but the destroyer droids had moved too far to either side to be affected, and his charges missed everything but the hangar walls. He dropped below the rim of the cockpit once more, eyes searching the control panel anew. Shields up! He hissed, forcing himself to concentrate as laser blasts streaked all around. Always on the right side! Shields are always on the right! He flipped several likely switches, and the afterburner ignited with a rumble. He pushed another, then one more. The steering handle fought itself free of his grip, and the fighter wheeled about and streaked out through the hangar doors, lifting swiftly away. The cockpit hood slid smoothly into place, locking about the boy. R2, what's happening? He screamed. R2-D2's nervous beeps and whistles sounded through the intercom speakers. Yes, I know I pushed something, the boy answered. No, I'm not doing anything. He caught his breath as the beeps continued and read R2-D2's words on his cockpit display. It's on automatic pilot? We'll try to override it. The sleek yellow fighter had left the Naboo atmosphere and was entering deep space, leaving the planet behind, a green and blue jewel receding into the black. Ahead, a series of small silver dots appeared, growing steadily larger. Other ships. R2, where are we going? Anakin gasped, still trying to decipher the control panel. The comm system squawked and suddenly he was hearing the voices of Rick Ollier and the Naboo pilots who had taken off ahead of him. This is Bravo Leader! Rick's leathery voice broke through the static. Bravo 2, intercept enemy fighters. Bravo 3, make your run on the transmitter station. Copy, Bravo Leader! The response came back. Anakin could see them now, the silver dots taking on recognizable shape, transforming into Naboo starfighters, spread out against the blackness, approaching the larger, blockier form of the Federation battleship. Enemy fighters straight ahead, Rick Ollier warned suddenly on the comm. At the same moment, R2-D2 beeped hurriedly at Anakin. The boy felt his stomach lurch as he read the display. What do you mean the autopilot is searching for the other ships? What other ships? His eyes shifted to the Naboo fighters ahead. Not those? R2-D2 whistled a quick confirmation. Anakin collapsed in his seat. The autopilot has taken us up there with them? Into battle? His mind raced. Well, get us off autopilot, R2! The astromech droid beeped and whistled some more. There is no manual override! Anakin shouted in despair. Or at least not any I can find. You'll have to rewire or something. R2, hurry! He stared helplessly through the cockpit glass as his fighter streaked directly toward the heart of the Trade Federation swarm, wondering what in the world he was going to do to save himself now.